Next guest is finding opportunities in fixed income, not treasuries per se. It's in corporate credit, which has been super strong even as rates have backed up. Joining me is Mark Avalone, president of Potomac Wealth Advisors. Mark, you might think people would, uh, you know, at least be burned to some extent by this backup in yields, but spreads are the tightest they've been in like 15 years, and people, the the appetite for corporate credit seems unabated. Well, there are a couple of reasons to own bonds, and for a lot of retirees and for a lot of investment accounts, it's a ballast against inevitable stock volatility. It's, it's, it's been a proven diversifier except for that awful 2022. So jumping back in here with uh, investment-grade corporates in the 5% yield range is not a bad way for investors to stay above long-term inflation. And remember, earlier this week, Goldman came out with a report that stocks may average 3% for the next decade. So Instead of people thinking that bonds are just a, 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 you know, a slow waste of time, think about taking on equity risk and only getting 3% for the decade. So if you can go out, get investment-grade, solid American companies at a 5%-plus rate of return, we think that can be attractive for investors. And I like the way you, you put it here. You said you're not looking to hit home runs with the bond portfolio. You know, you're just looking uh, maybe for some diversification, a little bit of cautious positioning. Um, and so there are a few other ways of doing that on, on the short, uh, shorter term allocations as well. Maybe you can give those examples. But I think there's a lot of people who just want to sidestep this altogether until things settle down a bit. Well, that's right. And on the short end, money markets are really hard to beat. And, and we understand why the emotion is there. We try to lengthen duration a little, whether it's uh, J.P. Morgan's ultra short uh, bond or PIMCO low duration. We lean on those great companies to take care of that end of the yield curve. We want to get individual securities further out on the on the timeline. But we think that investors who have been burned, if they have acts, if they have availability throughout the yield curve. They stay interest rate neutral, stay away from the long end, leave that for those who are looking for capital gain, and you'll avoid those massive price headaches that we saw just two years ago. Just want to point out as well, at a time when private credit is blowing up, <laughs> is uh, that's, I'm using that in a positive way, it's, it's become an enormous asset class with a lot of people excited about the opportunities for retail investors, but you would sound a note of caution here. Uh, we're very much against individuals buying private credit. I was a lender for many years, and I understand that banks say no a lot of times, but a lot of times it's for good reason. And what we learned in 2008 is if you give Wall Street bankers bonuses to make debt and then sell it to another holder of that debt, you're running a big risk. There's a reason commercial bankers are mostly paid a salary with a small bonus. Wall Street may be the reverse, and that incents them to make loans, and I don't mind if they hold a large portion of that and then sell a portion to their retail or a private client, but I am concerned when a majority of that debt is off their balance sheet, they're on the next deal, and someone's holding the risk. That has rarely proven to be a good long-term play for fixed income investors. Yeah, and again, you know, a lot of these are floating rate instruments, so the yields will look even more attractive right now, but the risks to the companies grow as well because these are these are expensive to service. You know, they have to they have to make enough money to justify that. Just a final word mark before we let you go on the markets and overall how you expect uh, the economy to digest this. Do you think the backup in rates is mostly behind us now or how are you positioning? Well, we thought that when the Fed lowered 50 basis points, we were we actually were together that day, and I said I wouldn't be buying bonds right now. The 10-year was closer to 3.8. We've backed up almost 50 basis points. This is a more attractive entry point for bond investors. I don't see it staying higher much longer. It can spike up, especially in front of this election. The fear of what both candidates are saying is very inflationary, but I think investors need to realize that's campaign rhetoric. Most of it, if most of it is not going to come to pass, and we think that rates settle in in the four percent range, which will be favorable for some borrowers. We don't expect anything to come near the five percent, so we're still bullish. And stocks generally perform well with a ten-year in the four four and a half percent range or lower. All right, Mark. Thanks for your time today. Really appreciate it.